Karong Adlawa, Enero 8, sa tuig 1851, siya na tao sa Indang Kabiti. Di ay ba? Atong pasalamatan ang atong di ay ba mission partners, Mrs. Maria Lourdes Tanod Danod, Aimeline Lumbayon, Jean Sobiaco, Thelma Sebalies, Serena Go, Eugene O. Ginette. Mark chapter 1 verse 7. The theme of his preaching was, One more powerful than I is to come after me. I am not fit to stoop and untie his sandal straps. Reflection If we only know who we are and what has God done in our lives, we may be able to avoid a sense of entitlement. Instead, we will realize that we are only His humble servants who have received everything from Him and can only find fulfillment by serving Him humbly. Prayer My humble Savior, You were born in a stable. Make me live humbly and gratefully to Your saving actions. Amen. Brothers and sisters, be humble. This reflection is sponsored by Engineer June and Evelyn Alegre Sardido and Family, Maha Opus and Family, Laverna Hills Multipurpose Cooperative, Diversion Road, Davao City, MQ Luia Kisa Pharma, Mr. and Mrs. Milet Quisido and Family, Miraflor Makiling and Family, ARSP Trading, Alejandro and Grace Adaptar and Family, PT Coco and Coffeeville Apartment Home, FS Palatino Industrial Corporation, Attorney Jan Reese J. Relampagos, Panabo City Mayor Jose Relampagos and Josephine Relampagos and family Mr. and Mrs. Alberto and Mary Lou Nasol and family Jerry Jojo Antes and family Holena Trading Blue Boys Aqua Venture El Rayo Parts and Hardware RDL and Donum Day Accidents. So please wait for the evacuation signal before making your way to the exits. In the event of an emergency that requires immediate evacuation, please walk briskly and calmly towards...
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. The last day of Christmas, the feast of the baptism of the Lord, and also a wonderful day for us as we witness and begin this event of the installation of the new president of Adelaide Davao University, Father Carlos San Juan. Let us prepare for this Holy Eucharist by once again recalling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us the everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption reborn of water and the Holy Spirit may always be well pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever Amen please be seated for the liturgy of the word A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? your wages for what fails to satisfy. Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David, as I made him a witness to the peoples a leader and commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is, is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. So there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now, the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his son. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to honor the Holy Gospel. St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. This is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens. You are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Father Karel, thank you so much. It is such an honor and joy for me to be part of this event, especially this Holy Eucharist. The Gospel reading from St. Mark that we just heard proclaimed is seen as the beginning of the public life and ministry of Jesus. The beginning of his mission. To that mission, all of us in various degrees are invited to participate in each according to his or her vocation in life. Today, we mark the beginning of Father Carroll's tenure as the fifth president of this Catholic Jesuit University. I am tempted to say, and I will say it, that we are not just installing Father Carroll to a lofty academic office, but more profoundly, we are celebrating Father Carroll's new and deeper insertion into that mission of Jesus himself. St. Mark's account of how Jesus begins his mission is terse and laconic, but it leaves us with so much to reflect on. Perhaps that is the reason why Father Carroll chose today the Feast of the Baptism of Jesus for his installation day. He, together with his new academic community and all of us here, have quite a bit to reflect on. Allow me then to draw some lessons from today's Gospel reading, from today's liturgy, as my clumsy attempt at accompanying you in this spirituality, savoring the significance of what we are doing today. We begin with John the Baptist's opening statement that he is merely preparing the way for someone, capital S. And that someone is so much greater, so much important than him. John is implying that what he is doing, his mission, its purpose and dimensions are not his to determine. In effect, John is saying, I may be a lonely voice crying out in the wilderness, a line from the prophet Isaiah, but I am not alone. I am part of a plan. My role is that, is that plan is preparatory. That role ends when the one I am preparing for finally arrives. By then, he must increase, I must decrease. Ilum oportet crescere. That's my Episcopal motto also. In just a few verses, John the Baptist has captured the essence of what is to be on mission. To be on mission is to be part of the grand plan of God that involves so many who have come before us and many more who surround and help us and still more who will come along after we are gone. Many have labored in this vineyard called Ateneo de Davao because this university was not built in the day. There are names on plaques on some of the buildings standing on the three campuses of the university. Del Rosario, Thibault, Daigler, Barcelona, Finster, Dutterwich, to name a few. They are your, Father Carroll, 
John the Baptist. They have prepared this place for you. Each of them has a story to tell about their struggles and victories, about how they came to know, bit by bit, God's plan for his people as they journeyed along, knowing what they have accomplished. You cannot stop wondering how amazing God's grace is. He, the ultimate planner who enables those whom he calls to do so much with very little. The first lesson then, Father Carroll, if I may allow to address you directly, is relax. Cool kalang. Don't lose your hair like some of us. <laughs> Others have done it, and there is a loving God that holds you in the hollow of his hand. And now the second lesson. To begin this mission, there was no going to Jerusalem for Jesus. There was no ascending to Mount Zion amid the fanfare of trumpets blaring and the resounding acclamation of the people. That was the usual initial ritual of countless chosen ones in the history of Israel as described many times by the psalmist. Instead of that, Jesus goes quietly to a small corner of the River Jordan and accepts baptism from John. There is no grand ceremony of ascending to power, but a humble ceremony of submission. The ritual by which sinners humbly accept the loving forgiveness of God becomes for Jesus the humble acceptance of the authority and preferred ways of the real author and architect of his mission. It is not enough that Jesus had become man, had endured being born in a stable, had been to the desert to fast and pray for 40 days and nights. He must believe once more and accept the low-key methods of the Father. He must be ever mindful that the Father is partial to small, obscure beginnings, like the tiny mustard seed that is hidden in the soil, but eventually becomes a huge tree. Like the yeast that is that in small amounts is hidden in the door, but eventually makes the bread rise. In the hustle and bustle of the apostolate, which is at once a human effort as it is a divine project, we seem always to seek the best human means to accomplish our intermediate goals. We have been taught that grace does not take the place of nature, but builds upon it. So we do our best to avail of the latest that human know-how has to offer. We make use of multimedia, even AI, to cite a few examples. But sometimes even our best intentions and mightiest efforts do not meet with success. Or just when you think you have it in the bag, you find out you fail. When that happens, is it time to blame God? After all, you are not doing his work. Are you not doing his work, serving his people, seeking his greater glory? You certainly can. 
God has been known to handle some of the most bitter recriminations from a few of his own and went down the history of salvation. But on second thought and reflection, it might be that God is just telling you that you need another baptism, another surrender of your will to His, another acceptance of His absolute ownership of the mission, the accomplishment of which, though secured and certain, will come about only in His own good time. The second lesson then, for all of us who are partakers of this mission, is this. God likes baptisms and may require us to go through it more than once in our lifetime. Now to my third thought and lesson. Why did Jesus deliberately join the crowd of prostitutes, tax collectors, common sinners who were seeking to be baptized by John? Jesus was no sinner, we know that. He did not stand in need of baptism, we know that. He had no need of forgiveness. Yet, like all the rest of the crowd, he stood in line to be baptized by John. After much insistence on Jesus' part, John did baptize him. What Jesus did, or what Jesus allowed to be administered on his person, met the approval of his Father in heaven. For as he emerged from the waters after baptism, a voice is heard, You are my beloved Son, and with you I am well pleased. The Father is pleased with Jesus because he went to thee and redeemed, and identified himself with them like to believe that the Father loves Jesus because he accomplished those, he accompanied those in need to find redemption in the baptism of John. The Father loves his Son because he has accepted in no uncertain terms the mission to be mediator and savior of mankind. In a word, the Father loves the Son because the Son is not for Himself, but for the world. Here the question may be raised, how can the Atenry Davao University be for the world in this particular time and place? Like the, like the Son, whose mission is to be the servant of the world, Ateneo de Davao University, I like to say this, must continue to learn how to serve its region, its island, which is Mindanao, and beyond. If war breaks out in Cotabato or Maguindanao, I like to believe it must continue to push for dialogue and champion the ways of peace. As it has done in the past, it must seek the cooperation of so wide a network of collaborators that the few who actively espouse violence and revenge will be effectively sidelined and discredited. If the hinderlands are exploited, by responsible mining, the rivers and waterways polluted by careless mining practices, the university 
should revive, as in the past, its campaign against selfish interests behind these practices. The campaign should continue in our local churches, in Congress, in the local literature, in social and mass media, in newspapers, and other areas. God forbid that there will come a day when Ateneo de Davao University shall no longer have enemies and shall have grown fat from the favors lavished on it by the enemies of the common good. I pray to God that that day never comes. I pray that Ateneo de Davao University under the leadership of Father Carroll continues to form and produce men and women for others, continues to seek and do the mission of Jesus. all stand. <clears throat> Jesus came to be baptized in the Jordan so that through the cleansing waters of baptism he might heal our sinful nature. Let us now pray to the Father that we may live up to our dignity as his children as we pray, Lord, listen to your people. Lord, listen to your people. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests, deacons, and all who exercise authority in the church, may they serve as the Lord's light, so that their flock, whom they are bound to serve, may follow the path that leads to peace. We pray. Lord, listen to your people. For all public servants, may they become responsible leaders who foster love and concern so that they may build their communities in harmony and peace. We pray. Lord, listen to your people. For the victims of natural and man-made calamities, may we show our compassion and empathy for those who are greatly affected by these calamities, especially those who suffer loss of loved ones livelihood, and shelter, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. For all of us gathered today, may we be reminded of our own baptism, to live as pure as Christ, to follow Christ's light, and to become worthy sons and daughters of the Father, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. For Father Karel San Juan, May the Lord's light and love fill him as he leads the university towards its mission of sharing the good news to the island of Mindanao and to the whole world. We pray. Lord, listen to your people. For the Ateneo de Davao University, may we as Catholic, Filipino, and Jesuit University always seek and strive to develop ourselves to become better servants of the Lord and the people, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. For all the faithful departed, especially Archbishop Emeritus Fernando Capalia, D.D., Omar San Juan, may they recline with the saints and angels of the banquet in the kingdom of heaven, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. Heavenly Father, grant that we may be faithful to Jesus, to whom we belong in body, mind, and spirit, by our baptism in water and the Spirit, through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. Kindly pass the offertory baskets. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, 
so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who will in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world who lives and reigns forever and ever amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just a duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship, your, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please wait for the priests and ministers to arrive at their posts before standing by row and forming your line. Thank you.
please all rise? Let us pray. Nourished with the sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our university president, Father Carol S. San Juan S.J., will now give his words of thanks. We'd like to thank everyone for your participation in this Eucharistic celebration. Thank you very much. We give you a round of applause. I'd like to thank our concelebrating priests, my brother Jesuits from different places all over the country, um, my brother priests and religious from different schools and institutions, many of which are in Mindanao. We thank you very much. We thank our friends from the Archdiocese of Davao who helped us in this beautiful Eucharistic celebration. M Monsignor Jimmy Gamboa, Monsignor, maraming salamat. Our Reverend Deacon Richard John Cariaga, and then our Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Davao, Bishop George Rimando, marami pong salamat. In this great feast of the baptism, where our Lord Jesus Christ is missioned and blessed to be shepherd of all nations, to be shepherd of all the world, we are super blessed, we were super blessed in the Ater Dodawa University to be graced by the wonderful presence of our shepherd in the Archdiocese of Davao. Archbishop Romulo Valles, Dagang Salamat Trio. Be assured that I and my brother shepherds, clergy, and administrators, and leaders, and stewards in the Ater de Tavo University, we have taken heed of your counsel to be baptized again and again and again. Secondly, to be faithful to the mission of our Lord Jesus, no matter how difficult and struggling we can be. And then lastly, to relax. <laughs> I need that. And to entrust ourselves to the divine providence of our Lord Jesus. Dagang salamat, our beloved shepherd, Archbishop Muloy Valle. Salamat po. After the Mass, may we request all the concelebrating priests to remain for the photo op. Also, right after our Eucharistic celebration, may we request our guests to please proceed immediately to the Martin Hall. You may take the elevators located at the community center or at the Arupi Hall to go up to the fourth floor. There are monitors and ushers at the entrances of Martin Hall to help you locate your designated seats. To all assistant deans, chairs, and faculty representatives, the procession will commence at exactly 4.50 p.m. Please be in the line by 4.45 p.m. Thank you. Please all rise for the final blessing. Bishop George, please accompany me for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bless the name of the Lord. Who now made on. heaven and earth. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made, made heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>